the projects that I can say impact me will be more like more in a way like I spent 10 years mm. uh, documenting it, mm. which is which is a lot. It's a lot of time. It's a series I did on a woman of Casa Xochiquetzal in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's a unique shelter for elderly sex workers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this 10 years was a huge commitment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I wanted to commit because it's a project that uh, talk about, uh, incorporate so many issues I care about. It talk about women's rights, it talk about sex trade, mm -hmm. It will talk about like about violence against women, mm -hmm. about vulnerable group, mm -hmm. and also about you know the invisibility of the elderly people. Mm -hmm. And when I started, I was like, oh, I never thought about that. Like about like uh, this question: Have you ever thought what's happened to sex worker when they get old? Podcasting from the Art Gallery of Mississauga, this is Border Crossings, a podcast where we listen to stories and experiences from artists, innovators, community activators, and people living creative lives. I'm your host, Vasandra, and I can't wait to unpack the magic of Border Crossings with you. Are you curious about living a creative life fearlessly? Then hang tight for a dose of inspiration. We're live. Hi, Benny. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. And and thank you so much for, for having me. Oh, it is our pleasure. So, Benny, I'm keen to know how is the pandemic treating you and your family? How are you coping up? Well, yeah, in general, I'm good. It was, it was a bit difficult at the beginning. But uh, my family and friend uh, luckily are healthy and we're really trying to process all what's happening. And most importantly, we're trying not to ask ourselves too much because mm -hmm. I do think it's, it's a time where you have like, you know, like to focus in the good. And, you know, like the art things could be professionally because our profession has been eaten hard. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, I really feel privileged to be where I am because I live in Mexico and here 57% of the population need to work daily to survive. Mm -hmm. And now they can do that and they are not receiving help. So, yeah, I really feel uh, privileged. I like that you have a grateful approach towards this. Benny, I know you've been, you've worked on the WP Journal project, uh, and that's where I essentially discovered your work. So could you tell us a little bit more about this project? Yeah, so I'm proudly part of Women Photographs. It's an initiative funded by uh, Daniela Zalkman three years ago. She's a photoshop journalist because she wanted to elevate the voice of uh, women visual journalist all over the world. And I mean, we are today around like 1000 women photographer in more than 100 countries. So it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And I find this uh, community to be very supportive in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few months ago, uh, two photographers, Charlotte Schmidt and Anna Yoon, mm -hmm. they posted an open call on this group. Mm -hmm and asking who wanted to participate to create a visual journey of our lives during during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And we are now like 100 photographer participating. This is brilliant. So uh, I want to know typically, let's say when you got a call to participate in this project and you decided that you want to put yourself, uh, you know, out there, I want to know what is your process like typically this is a new situation. So what was your process like? Well, you know, like um, when the COVID outbreak started in Mexico, mm -hmm. I would have normally covered it, but now I'm a mother of uh, one child. Mm -hmm. So I decided I will not cover because I didn't want to, to expose myself or expose my family or expose others. So it was like a very frustrating process for me. Mm -hmm. 
And at the same time, on mid-March, I got all my assignment, all my project cancelled, mm -hmm. and everything, you know, became so uncertain for I mean, for everybody. Mm -hmm. So being part of, of uh, this uh, journal project, mm -hmm. this collective project, mm -hmm. and connecting with so many other photographers across border, it was it, it was a, a very it was very motivating for me. Yeah. And also, you know, like, uh, I think there was like 40 groups. So I was group 29. Okay. And it was very interesting because everything was done online. And we talk about different approaches. Mm -hmm. And then they start to post on the Instagram account and you will see like so much compelling story. Yeah. So also one thing I, I, I learned from them, it's, um, I was very impressed by how they use technology, you know, how they use the Instagram platform, like in such a creative way, because all the different groups, they experiment like with photography, video, with sound, they will play with the design, with the layout, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, uh, it's very beautiful. That's wonderful. And I did see your uh, contribution as well, and it's just it's just beautiful. Do you want to share a little bit about your contribution to the project? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, it was quite challenging because normally I typically focus on photographing other people's story. Mm -hmm. But for the first time, I, I, I decide I, I will photograph my three years old son. Mm -hmm. So I start to photograph his feeling, like his intimate moment with his father. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I start to photograph all all his process, you know, as a child in confinement. Mm -hmm. And I decide to call this project when I grow up, mm -hmm. because it's a project that talk about the life of a child growing up in quarantine, which is pretty quite uh, unusual, no? Yes. And him, you know, like with with his school, uh, like being uh, shut, like being closed from one day to another, like. Mm -hmm. Many other children, you know, is he's living at such a young age, so so many changes. Like for example, he hasn't he hasn't seen now another child for months. Mm. Like sometimes he get up and he say, "Oh, I miss my friend, I miss my teacher." Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's kind of strange also for for us as a parents to see him like doing homeschooling. Mm -hmm being sitting you know on a computer doing schooling through zoom mm -hmm. you know at three years old yeah. so like as a parent and and I'm, I'm really wondering like you know mm -hmm. how it's going to be psychologically mm -hmm. affecting him you know all this social distancing mm -hmm. i mean he's still on his formative years mm -hmm. how he's going to remember this mm -hmm. uh how it is for for so many children, so you. I try. Yeah. yeah, so I try to 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 capture this. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, it's not our house; it's a it's a temporary house, so he's not having his toys. Mm. The space is is very empty. Mm. So I, I it's the photo like really focus on him and his feelings. That's beautiful. And thank you so much for sharing that with the community and with the world. It's it's inspiring work, Bene. I know that as a documentary photographer, you've worked on a lot of projects, award-winning projects. Can you talk about the one project that impacted your life the most? Well, the thing is like, they all impacted me in one form or, or, or another. Mm -hmm. Like um, when I, I was in Uganda, in East Africa, and I learned, you know, they, they wanted to pass a bill mm -hmm. suggesting, you know, to if you're gay, you can be killed. Oh. I mean, I really couldn't believe it. So I, I started to do some research and I was even more shocked when, when I realized, you know, like 19% of the continent has homophobic law. Mm. So I really wonder how a gay person would survive in such a hostile env environment. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm like, okay, I really want to meet the activists. I really want to meet the, the closeted homosexual and talk with them. And, mm. and I really want to document their bravery and 
how they 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 deal with this and how they can fight against such uh, so many injustices. Mm. So this was like from this project. Then I did another project on uh, global obesity, mm -hmm. which is uh, they call it I think like the the silent epidemic. Yeah. And and um, uh, when I I start to contact people, I, I didn't know they will react. You know, like being like, hey, I want to interview you because you're obese. And mm -hmm. but at the end, I was very touched by how the person I interview and I photograph, they were so willing mm -hmm. to share their experience, mm -hmm. their suffering, their insecurity, mm -hmm. and they really wanted to talk about it. And more with all the the discrimination they are they are they are facing but to i mean to answer your question like the projects that i can say impact me will be more like uh it impact me more in a way like i spent 10 years mm. uh documenting it mm. which is which is a lot it's a lot of time it's a series i did on a woman of casa sochiquetzal in mexico mm -hmm. It's a unique shelter for elderly sex workers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this 10 years was a huge commitment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I wanted to commit because it's a project that uh, talk about, uh, incorporate so many issues I care about. It talk about women's rights, it talk about sex trade, mm -hmm. It will talk about like about violence against women, mm -hmm. about vulnerable group, mm -hmm. and also about you know the invisibility of the elderly people. Mm -hmm. And when I started, I was like, oh, I never thought about that. Like about like uh, this question: Have you ever thought what's happened to sex worker when they get old? Mm -hmm. So, like. Uh, discovering this shelter was was very like uh, uh, showing me like a unique look at at prostitution, mm -hmm. showing me things I I never thought about. That's that's remarkable, uh, Benny. You committed ten years of your life to this entire project, um, and I know that you might have gathered a lot of less like learnings along your journey. Maybe some are professional lessons, like as a documentary photographer, it's not always just about the equipment. It's about the setting. It's about the emotions, right? So mm -hmm. I want to know, is there any particular story that stands out in all of these 10 years? Well, I mean, pretty much all of them, because they have like such a strong story, like, mm. Like uh, most of these women, you know, they are not doing uh, sex work by choice, mm -hmm. but more by circumstance. Mm -hmm. So they were telling me a story of some that have been abused at a young age and have to run away from home, like very young. Mm -hmm. uh, another um, story was like a woman, she told me she was abandoned by her mom. Mm -hmm. So I will always remember the story when she told me like her mother left and left her on the road and she looked at, at the car living with her, her mom inside, not even saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. And another woman, she was sold for a television. So oh. all of these women have such uh, tragic stories. True. So all of these stories like really impact me. True. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Benny. Uh, Benny, I hear from you all these stories and I know you've traveled the world for your work. So I want to know which place inspires you the most? Well, all of them, but the only thing I can tell is like today, the place I call home is Mexico. Mm -hmm. So I guess that one. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. So do you have any advice for emerging documentary photographers? This is a special art. So mm -hmm. do you have any advice for folks who are just starting out? Well, I, I would have like, yeah, many things I want to share and a lot of them, I learned them from other photographers or, or during practice mm -hmm. and also from some mistakes. But I would say most importantly, I think you've got to find issues or stories that 
really grab you really that you really care about because like when you care about it i think it's when you will always do your your best work mm -hmm. and i think it's important also to ask yourself why do i want to do this story mm -hmm. and i mean uh for me i i i always try to manage to live in a place i'm gonna document and I always try to manage to work with a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like having time to work on the story really allows us to engage more. So maybe trying to apply for a grant or have a different source of income to be able to finance your project. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, then I would say, you know, like really respect the person you photograph, explain them your intention, engage, connect with them. Mm -hmm. When photographing, it's very important to to stay ethical because you know it's like it's, it's journalism. So mm -hmm. I used to do art photography, and the big difference is you have very different code of ethics. So don't stage, don't alter your photo, don't pay mm -hmm. uh, the person you want to photograph. Like money doesn't have to be, should not be, can't be a condition to photograph. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, sometimes, yeah, if you want to help the person you photograph after the story is done, mm -hmm. and as long as they are not expecting money as part of the project, I think it's okay. But only if it's after and it was never a condition. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, I think it's good to team up with a, if you can team up with a writer, mm -hmm. because like, it's two different language. For example, with the project of the Casaso Chiquetal, I teamed up with a writer. Mm -hmm. We did a book and uh, I, I feel it was like so important because the writer could really write the testimony of all these women and their story. Mm -hmm. So, and then I will be like, don't be afraid to tell the story from your unique perspective. Don't be afraid to be creative mm -hmm. uh also try to look for feedback about your ongoing project mm -hmm. uh you know for people to criticize or give you direction like the people who will will be honest with you mm -hmm. yeah and and uh and then like when you feel it's ready i, I think it's it's good to share not everything but like maybe like the more important image for you, like share it on social media mm -hmm. to, to draw, to try to draw attention to the, to the issue. Yes. And maybe one last thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember seeing uh, an editor saying this, like, oh, you all have website, but we can't see your phone number or your email. Mm -hmm. So maybe have this, your contact information visible not just a link to send a message, but that would be like one little detail. <laughs> you discuss the difference between art photography and documentary photography, correct? Mm -hmm. I want to know, why did you pick this particular um, profession? Why did you pick documentary photography? Oh, so yeah, it's an interesting question because you know, I study in art school mm -hmm. and I study typography and graphic design. So I first started as a graphic designer. And when I was working on my graphic design project, I had an ethical issue using other people image, you know, like I was scanning and I was like, oh, no, I don't feel it's mine. Mm -hmm. So I start making my own image mm -hmm. and then I start exploring photography by doing art photography. So before doing documentary photography, I was doing art photography mm -hmm. and I was directing model and I was, I feel I was like very like controlling the message. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I, in 2005, I traveled to Peru mm -hmm. and there I realized like what I wanted was to tell people real story, you know, not being me creating the story, but like to document people people real story so in lima it's when i did my first documentary photo project about street kids mm -hmm. 
And this is where my career started and where when I really get into photojournalism. Mm -hmm. So I, I and also, you know, like with time, I, I like, for example, in documentary photography, if you do a portrait, mm -hmm. yes, there maybe you will be a bit directing, but but it's it's the difference is so huge because in in photojournalism or in documentary photography, you don't intervene, you you don't uh, you you just there and you and you capture, mm -hmm. you know, like that's what I was saying, like don't stage your photo or or you know like don't uh, manipulate your photo in heart you can totally do that mm -hmm. yeah true thank you so much uh, thank you for sharing that uh, Bene. and i really know that this is um, this work that you're doing out there is really incredibly important for the world and uh, i hope that you get many more opportunities to travel to experience different things and to uh, document that for people like us. So Benny, tell me, how can we keep in touch with your work? Where can we find your work? Mm -hmm. Well, on my website, which is benedictdestruis.com mm -hmm. and also my Instagram account, which is benedictdestruis. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I will be like very happy if you can follow. <laughs> it's always always nice to share absolutely thank you thank you so much for your time benny uh, mm -hmm. we hope to see you in mississauga once this pandemic is, is over we hope to see you and we hope to uh, keep in touch with you here as the art gallery of mississauga thank you so much yeah and thank you so much for listening thanks for joining us on this episode this podcast is an extension of the Border Crossings Project, a community-engaged arts project funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation, the Ontario Arts Council, and the City of Mississauga. Do you have a story to share with us? Are you living a creative life out there on your own? Well, I'm keen to hear from you. Write to me at agmconnect at mississauga.ca. 